<clears throat> hello everybody hello youtube hello art history enthusiasts and visual culture aficionados it's me again miss m and i'm back with yet another video uh this time i'm finally finally doing my intro video for ancient egypt and before I get started with that, um, as always, I'm starting out here, the video at my homepage for my channel, just so that you know you're in the right place. And, um, you know, so, so, so you know <laughs> who you're dealing with and what's going on today. Like I said, I want to do my intro video for ancient Egypt, which I'm not going to make any promises, but I hope it's not a very long one. But we shall see. We shall see. As you can see from all these tabs lined up up here, I've got quite a few things to show you. As these videos progress, like I do one for um, each kind of art historical period as it's taught in art history survey courses. So for in an art history survey course, what you would get is you'd start off with prehistory and or uh, also known as the Stone Age. Then you move on to Mesopotamia and then you move on to Egypt. And then you move on to the Aegean cultures, the pre um, ancient Aegean cultures, and then Greece and then the Etruscans and then Rome and then so on and so forth. So I'm only on Egypt. I'm only on the third one that I've listed. Um, and there are so many more. So, uh, again, these videos, they're obviously not very high tech, but they do take a little bit of doing. Okay. And I want to get these intro videos out of the way before I start getting into any discussions of any individual art piece or concept or what have you. So we're going to do that today. As as you can see, let me count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I got 15 tabs open, plus my, my uh, home page, which I guess that makes it 16, but that one really doesn't count. Like I said, I just do that to let you know you're in the right place. But <clears throat> ancient Egypt. Everybody talks about ancient Egypt. Everybody knows about ancient Egypt. Um, it's taught, of course, in schools, and there are so many sources of information regarding ancient Egypt that is kind of mind-boggling, and it can get very confusing very quickly. And the problem or the danger is that it can get so confusing so quickly and the person who's trying to learn about it can get so overwhelmed that they might just want to give up and say, you know what? No, I don't really need to know this much. Um, and that's what I believe personally. The problem is with education or kind of setting out on a journey, your own journey or an educa a formal educational journey to learn anything because sometimes even if you've got somebody guiding you, you kind of don't know where to start and you don't know where to finish either. Finishing isn't, you know, you should be concerned about finishing. There is no end to the educational journey, but the beginning is the most difficult part, just like with anything else in life. Like you want to do something, maybe you want to clean your house, right? We've all been there. And you just don't know where to start. Should you start dusting? Should you start vacuuming? Should you start mopping floors? So should you start cleaning out drawers and, and cupboards and attics and uh, garages? Or, you know, like, where do you start? And some people say, oh, just start anywhere. I don't know whether or not I believe with that. I believe that. But, um, or I agree with that. But this is how I would do it if it were me. Okay, if it were me starting all over again. Yes, I use Wikipedia. I use it so often that it might become a joke. 
if you if you stick with me and watch keep watching these um videos on my channel and but i use it for a reason and i've said that in a, in past videos why i use it because of the organization because it is so neatly organized into categories that are understandable and easily navigable that's why I do it. That's why I use it. And I'm starting out with this. Let me actually just go through all of them just to show you what all I've decided to include in my intro for your, I guess, reading material. I guess if this was a class, right, this would be the part where your teacher or your professor tells you what your reading assignments are. Okay, so you can get a foothold or just just get started with with this and then after you do your basics right then you then the sky's the limit then you can do whatever you want to do and go wherever you want to go but after you get done with like just the basic f foundation um you have like an idea of what's out there and how to go about seeking out more information if it interests you so these are my tabs, okay? Prehistoric Egypt, Wikipedia page, Ancient Egypt, Ancient Egyptian religion, Ancient Egyptian afterlife beliefs, and I've got something highlighted here because I, I lined all these up before I started the video, but Ancient Egyptian afterlife beliefs. Um, this thing. Ancient Egyptian deities. List of Egyptian deities. Egyptian language. Oh, what am I doing here? Uh, what's this one? Art. Finally. Yeah, that's why we're really here. I always get to that last <laughs> art of ancient Egypt. An example of something that I think I would like to discuss in the future. Palettes. Um, there, you know, if you studied art history, if you've taken an art history class in college, especially if it's a survey art history course, you will have learned you will have heard of these palettes, specifically this one. Okay, this is the one they seem to always talk about. And I want to talk about it too, just not right now. This for later. So, yeah, so Cosmic Palette, Narmer Palette, and here's another one. Uh, the Metropolitan Museum's Collection Area page on Egyptian art. They really do. They, I, There's a reason... I keep going back to Wikipedia, and there's a reason I keep going back to the Metropolitan Museum in New York City, because they, it's not just for looking at beautiful or historical images, it's because they've done a great job of assembling a lot of information that is really very uh, well put together, okay? Another museum that I'm going to leave in the description, sorry. I keep, I hovered over these and they opened up, um, that I'm going to put in the description of this video is the LACMA collections for Egypt, ancient Egypt. And the LACMA is, is an okay museum. It's been going through some stuff. Not going to comment on that here, but whatever. Um, they have images and it's just images with the Metropolitan Museum. It's image, it's Im blech, sorry. It's images and info. Okay. Also, I'm going to leave a link to my personally assembled, uh, Google Arts and Culture. I guess what, what should I call this gallery, uh, for Egyptian art objects. And, you know, we'll get to that at the end, but I went through as much of it as I could and I found all this stuff that I think is awesome. And I want to put these in future videos for whatever topic I'm doing, whether it's prehistory, Mesopotamia, Egypt, Greece, Rome. Um, when we get to, when we get to it, the uh, Byzantines, early Christianity, medieval, etc. Um, so that's that. And, and I want to turn you on to a YouTube channel that does a really amazing job of providing really amazing documentaries about all kinds of stuff, including ancient Egypt. So let's get started really, really quickly. Prehistoric Egypt. So I already did like just an intro to prehistoric art video in general 
what you need to know is that every culture, every civilization has its prehistoric period, whether it's Mesopotamia, whether it's Egypt, whether it's Greece, whether it's Rome, you name it, all over the world, all over planet Earth, whatever culture you're dealing with, they have a prehistoric segment of, you know, the, the beginning of the beginning of the beginning with regard to what's going on with their art, culture, history, etc. And Egypt is no different. So there's a prehistoric portion of Egyptian art. And this is the page for it. Again, why do I love Wikipedia? This over here on the right, History of Egypt. Look at this. You can click on any of these on this sidebar, right? Prehistoric Egypt, Ancient Egypt, Greco-Roman Egypt, Medieval Egypt, Early Modern Egypt, Late Modern Egypt, and then just the Egypt portal if you just want to look at, like, I guess, politics, government, whatever. Um, so that's one reason. And what else did they have here that caught my eye? They have, you know, these divisions of time and, and things like that, and they a small explanation. And within each explanation, there are highlighted terms, such as this one, that give you more information about whatever it is that interests or intrigues you. Okay? Um pottery. Look at this wonderful graphic that they have here on the evolution of Egyptian prehistoric pottery styles. Wow. Just wow. That's worth that's worth the price of admission alone, which is free, right? And this thing down here, look. Timeline. This is what does it for me. Uh, Paleolithic, Neolithic, and then from the fourth millennium, millennium uh, BC, and then they have this wonderful thing, uh, relative chronology, which you can look at in your own time if it, uh, once again, if it interests you. And also, the C, always look at the see also um, section of a Wikipedia page, prehistoric North Africa, if that interests you as well. Okay? So, so go through that, look through that, if, again, if, it, if you want to. Then we move on to ancient Egypt, and again, the sidebar, periods and dynasties of ancient Egypt. So we've got early, old kingdom, first intermediate, middle kingdom, second intermediate, new kingdom, third intermediate, late period, Hellenistic Egypt, and Roman Egypt. All right? And again, oh, here's this again. Right, same thing as the other page, but I guess they repeat it over and over um, on the Egyptian pages. So again, you have the contents. You can just click on whichever period uh, interests you. They have the different subject matters, government and economy, language, culture, including art, military, technology, and even like genetic studies of, I guess, the people who were around at the time. Again, wonderful charts, images. Um, what else? Let's see. Do they have any, any more awesome charts? I'm just scrolling through it for you, right? Let's see. Mm -hmm. No, not today. Um, oh, they have an outline of ancient Egypt. Should I click? Hmm. Yeah, I'll click. Just added something. I just added something to my tabs. Outline. What are they? Oh, this. Okay. Geography, government, uh, history. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm going to put this too. This is really, this is the kind of stuff I want. A one-stop shop for whatever you want to learn about with regard to, oh, look, look. Art, okay, great. Religion, we're going to get into that a little bit more in depth, but here is, it, it's here too in this outline, right? Just awesome. Just, oh gosh, they have a list of pharaohs. Look at this. I want to click on them all. Hmm. Golly. Should I? I don't know. Yes. I can't help myself. And I saw something else that I wanted to look at too. List of, no, not that. Inventions and discoveries. Archaeology of ancient Egypt. Okay. 
So, alrighty, so we got the list of pharaohs. Awesome. Oh, look at this pre-dynastic period, Lower Egypt, Upper Egypt. Oh yes, I must include this one. I can't, I can't not include this in, in the links in my description. It's just everything, everything you could ever want. Um, then this, Archaeology of Ancient Egypt. This is probably good to know because that's where all of the stuff that we have as far as ancient Egyptian art in various museums all over the world, including Egypt, but in some places maybe where they shouldn't be, I don't know. Um, it starts with archaeology. Somebody had to find it, right? Somebody had to find it, dig it out, and have, look at it, analyze it, think about it, try to figure out what was going on. So archaeology, of course, is one of these, one of the backbones of the study of um, Egyptian items, which, interestingly enough, all of those items fall into the category of art, which is why we're here. Another issue that I think is a very good thing to know about, um, ancient Egyptian religion, and this page, this article, is part of a series on ancient Egyptian religion. You can click, click, click. Oh, wow. Ay, ay, ay. Click, click. Texts. Amazing. And related religions. Wow. Okay. Okay. So why am I putting this here? Because understanding the religion or just, you don't have to have a very in-depth understanding. You're not, you know, you're not a scholar or anything like that, but if you want to understand the art, you have to have at least a basic understanding of the religion. That's why I put this here. Deities, cosmology, kingship, very important. Afterlife, Atonism, and so on and so forth. Uh, writings, mythology, etc. Practices, history. And do they, and I'm always on the lookout for charts. Always. Because that just makes life easier. Just makes life... No, those are not charts. I uh, well, already went ancient nearest prehistoric religion index of... Okay, so that's that. But this gives you a pretty good overview. Very good overview, actually. What I wanted to know is ancient... Again, this is a series on ancient Egyptian religions. So afterlife beliefs, specifically afterlife beliefs. What do they believe happens to, I guess, the soul? Um, after death. And what you will find when you read through these is that their idea of the soul is maybe not the idea uh, that most of us have if we live in the Western world, especially if we live in the United States. And you'll, you know, again, if you read through this, you will see what I mean. Um, for example, the soul has like five components that I know of. Uh, and each one has a different responsibility, right? So please do. There we go. Should I open this? Oh, this is just going to get ridiculous, but what the hey? Um, it opened here, didn't it? Yeah. Okay. So uh, Egyptian conception of the soul. There it is. Oh, wait, there's more than five. Why was I always taught five? Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, I goofed. But um, they describe each one, which, you know, back in the old days, if you wanted to know about this kind of stuff, you would have to go to the library and find books and read them. And actually find books, know what you're looking for, find what you're looking for, read it, and then kind of make sense of it. Again, this is why I love this website. Anyway, the ancient Egyptian concept of the soul. Very good. Ancient Egyptian deities. This is interesting as well. Uh, for obvious reasons and maybe also not so obvious reasons. The deities... Very similarly to what I discussed with Mesopotamia and when I did my video about Inanna, these characters, these deities, are, are sort of thought to 
preside over everything that is unseen. Unseen to us ordinary human beings, us mortals, in the world of the living. So these these characters, deities, are used to explain a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. The creation of the world, why things are the way they are, why you have to live the way you have to live. Okay, it, it, you know, to the ordinary person, that's where you get your answers. To an elite person, I'm not quite sure. I have my ideas, but I'll save those for future videos. Moving on. Lists of Egyptian deities. Look at this. Look at this. This is why I'm here. You can, you know, just about anyone that you can think of. In whatever capacity that, you know, that deity functions in their mythological system. You could probably find it here and at least find the name for it or find at least a little bit of information about it. All right. So this is why this is valuable. The, the religious system is complicated. The religious system is not just complicated, but terrifically complicated. And it seems to have been created, as most religious systems are, uh, or mythological systems, I should say. It seems to have been created with the idea that it was meant to be hard to understand. All right. And there, I don't know whether or not you agree with me or, or not, but that seems to be the point in all of them. Whether it's mythology or religion, it's supposed to be confusing, or it seems that way, right? Like, if only it were simpler, or if only people would be more, uh, you know, the people who do know about it, who, who are informed and educated and very knowledgeable, knowledgeable about it, if only they were a little bit less, um, I don't know, what's the word? can't think of the word right now. If if they could just simplify things, and they could if they wanted to, but for some reason they don't want to either. And I'm talking about living, breathing scholars, not not these, the priest class of, of the ancient world, no. Uh, Egyptian language, another very important thing to know or understand, or at least be aware of if you're going to get into looking at Egyptian art and trying to understand it. I think I said it in another video before, language equals religion equals art. They're all tied together. They're all tied together. If You have to know one to know the other to know the third. All right. So here it is. And I think, ooh, let's see. Let's see what kind of charts they got for us. Um, this is, this is what in, intrigues me. Uh, yeah, they've got, they've got some stuff here. They've got some stuff. Uh, but I'm looking for something very specific that I, I don't know if it's here or if it should be here. Cop no, I'm not, you know, Coptic is, I guess, is it the modern Egyptian language? Oh, where is it? Is it hieroglyphs? Oh, now you know I'm going to have to click on that one too. Oh, Lord. At least it's free. At least it's free. Hmm? Right? Uh, <laughs> maybe what I'm looking, well, language is important, but maybe what I'm more interested in that I don't, um, or maybe I can't figure out what it is that I'm looking for. Maybe the hieroglyphs are the thing that I'm really after here. Come on now. They had a chart. I know they did. I know they had a really, really, I've seen it before on Wikipedia. Oh. Oh, list of Egypt. That's the one. Oh yeah, this is getting really ridiculous. I need to stop. But I'm not gonna. Um there it is. That's what I wanted. Look. Look at this. And not just look at this, but look at you you'll see how long this list is. I'm just going to keep scrolling. So you can get an idea. 
Look at all of these little tiny pictures, also known as pictographs, and in this case also known as hieroglyphs. I didn't count them, because I just, you know, I remember seeing this, but never counted it. No. But I'm still scrolling, and I'm not done, and I'm not even halfway down the page. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Oh, my. My, 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 what, did I see what I think I just saw? No. No. No, that's not it. Okay, keep it moving. Oh, look at this. Just look at it. And there's, you know, they've got categories. Domestic and funerary furniture? Temple furniture? Sacred emblems, okay. Oh my, crowns, dress, staves, etc. What is this? Warfare, hunting, butchery. They've got categories for different areas of life, I guess, or different, maybe not just necessarily life, but activity. Different areas of activity, vessels of stone and earthenware. What? I've never, no, I've seen the chart before, but never, th never this. Never anything this extensive. Oh, I'm just so happy I found this, and I'm so happy I can show it to you. What is this? Oh, articles on individual hieroglyphs. No, I'm not going to click on all of them, or any of them, but now you know they're there. Um, hieroglyph, is par hieroglyph is part of article. Okay, great. Look at these symbols. Mm. Mm. I don't know what this is. Oh. Gardner sign list. Okay, you can look at this on your own. I'm not going to click on it, even though I'm tempted to. But you you get the idea. You get the idea of why. Like, should I even scroll up? I will scroll. Yeah, I'll scroll up. You get the idea of why and how. It's uh, why, just why it's so difficult. To, again, just get an idea of what's going on in an Egyptian work of art, in an ancient Egyptian work of art. Finally, here we are. Art of Ancient Egypt. And they've got it organized into the different time periods, um, the materials, the different, I guess, media. Uh, furniture is included as one of these art items, right? The categories of art items. Furniture, clothing, cosmetics, musical instruments, pottery, jewelry, architecture. Like I said, everything that any archaeologist has ever found in ancient Egypt is basically more or less considered a work of art. Okay, I'm going to scroll. Let's scroll. Let's see. And like I said, they've got it divided into, or uh, categorized, organized into all these separate periods, right? Old Kingdom, early dynastic period, pre-proto-dynastic period, and uh, I think they even have, do they? Yeah, pre-dynastic. Alrighty. So, there was a pre-dynastic period in Egypt. What does that mean? Before the the people that we have been taught to call pharaohs middle kingdom second intermediate period new kingdom okay so you you get the idea right and they keep going and going and going and going right up until where do they end with these oh wait 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 wait, wait. yeah roman Roman, I guess right up until Cleopatra, right? And Cleopatra was, from what I know, I could be wrong, but as far as I know, the last Egyptian pharaoh. All right, so we go from King Narmer to Queen Cleopatra. All right, and that's why I kind of want to start with this uh, palette thing. Palettes are, you know, they were used for mixing, allegedly, makeup or cosmetics, all right? And the most famous one is this one, the, the 
palette of King Narmer. And who is he? He was the unifier of Upper and Lower Egypt. That's why he's so important. And he's the one who kind of kicks off dynastic Egypt. And this is one that I want to talk about in future videos. Who was he? Why is he important? Some people say he wasn't even a real person. He was just an idea that they treated as though it was a real person. What do I, what do I believe? I don't know what to believe, but... Okay, Narmer. Yes, I'll enlarge it. And there's this. It looks very gray here. I don't know if that's a black and white image, but usually it's this kind of beautiful, what is that, a turquoise color or what have you. And it's a very violent image, by the way. I know it doesn't look violent because it's not like our modern horror movies with all of the special effects and, and what have you. But yes, th there's there's definitely something gory going on here that when you describe it in words, it becomes clear to you that something really, really gnarly and, and violent and, again, gory is going on in this palette. That's what I want to talk about in my future videos on ancient Egyptian art. We're almost done. Again, the Met. I wanted to look, I wanted you to look at this. Um, Egyptian art, you can open this history of the department what's on view, collection highlights of interest, related content, collection insights, stay connected, yada, yada, yada. And they have here, um, learn with us. Please do look at this part, right? If you're interested in this and go down to here, go down to the timeline of art history, open this up ever so many articles and essays on just about any subject you can imagine in the realm of art history. Okay, please do look at that. But like I said, this is what the Met is known for. It's really an, a really a pretty amazing institution of learning. The LACMA, I suppose they are too, but they seem to be more concentrated on just showcasing items, objects, things, art, images. Um, and of course, there is information about many of those images, but, you know, I don't think they can compare to the Met in that regard. Uh, and as I said, I will leave my link in the description for all the stuff that I've gathered in my little gallery uh, on this Google Arts and Culture page, which please use Google Arts and Culture. It's amazing. You can find, you know, you can, you can quote unquote visit just about any museum, any museum that's on here, and many of them are. And I'm scrolling slowly so you can get an idea of what is this whole row missing here. Oh, gosh. Whatever. Um, did they just remove all, all of these? I don't know. It was, it's been some time since I've compiled all of these, but you get the idea. Uh, what's this? Okay, it doesn't tell us. The Jed Pillar Amulet. All right. What's this? Temple of Tafé. A kitty cat. Figure of Horus as a falcon. They've got so many things. So many interesting, amazing, beautiful things to look at. Um, a hippo. Oh too cute bracelets etc so they've got they've got a lot of stuff and this is from all different museums all over the world um as far as ancient egypt is concerned and that like i said yes i will leave that in the description and finally timeline uh i guess i guess it's part of the history hit network and i just did a search for egypt and look at all the stuff that came up Wow, 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 wow. Uh, and I'm going to leave a link to... Was Cleopatra one of history's biggest killers? Now, doesn't that sound interesting? Um, Hypatia and the Great Fall of Alexandria. Look, they, look at all this stuff that they have. They just... It just keeps... Keeps coming. Um, okay, so that's that.
and I, I will leave you with the link specifically for this one, The Real Origins of Ancient Egypt. Since we're, this is an intro video, I'll leave you with this, The Origins of Ancient Egypt, Immortal Egypt on Timeline. So, I hope you enjoy that if you decide to watch it. Other than that, I think I'm basically done. Let me go back to Norma. Right? I guess I'll put this up as my thumbnail image. So, you again, you know, if you know, you know, right? Those of you who might be searching for videos on ancient Egypt or info, yeah, this is not one of those gloriously beautiful documentaries that have very high production values and interviews with PhD researchers and that feel, no, it's just me. It's just me, Miss Sam, and my little uh, screen grab video program and me just talking at you um this this is your starting point this is not for people i guess this video is definitely not for people who already know what's going on no mm -mm. um this is for people who don't know what's going on but would like to know and would like to at least begin uh to read into it more read read about it more and would like to, you know, get a better understanding of this kind of artwork so you can maybe apply it even to stuff in your daily life. When you look at stuff on TV, in movies, in books, literature, um, or just when you look at furniture in your own home even, and it might have the design of stuff in your house that you look at every they might have its origins in ancient Egypt and you don't even know it. You have no idea uh, because nobody told you. Nobody told you and maybe you would like to know and so that's why we're here. So anyway, Narmer, bloodthirsty Narmer. I will um, just got a, as I was saying that I just got an idea for another video to, again I want to talk about just art in general and you know what is it what is it and how do we know it when we see it again that's 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 a subject that nobody ever talks about what is art and how do you, how do you know it when you see it it's an interesting kind of exploration what is that word where does it come from what does it mean what is it referring to and why should we care right so anyway uh at this point in the video i would like to thank you for watching if you got this far if you got to the end you're amazing you're dedicated and i appreciate you very very much um <laughs> so until i guess i'm all done I, th I think i've said everything i wanted to say for this one so until i come back and I, you know, I'll, I'll come back and I'll, I'll talk at you again for some reason in the future. Uh, until the next video, once again, thank you. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share the video if you know somebody who would be interested in this content. Uh, and until, until next time, uh, I will go ahead and bid you bye-bye. So, bye-bye everybody.